Hi everyone, my name is Lisa. For those who are new here, I'm a registered nurse and I like to explain things in an easy way regarding medical myths and facts and different medical stories and how to be your best advocate. Today I wanted to share an interesting story with you that happened in 1939 to a little girl at the time, five years old, named Lena Medina. Have you heard of this little girl? Have you heard of this story? She is from Peru. At the age of four, she became pregnant. And when I first read about this, of course, I was thinking, how? Who? Really, I was more thinking of who. We have the answer of how because of precocious puberty. That means early onset puberty. But there still are no answers as to who. So this little girl named Lena was five years, seven months old when she gave birth via C-section to a little six pound baby boy named Gerardo. Now I hope I'm saying his name correctly. He was named after the doctor that took care of Lena and her baby and helped her along the way when it was discovered that she was pregnant at seven months. Lena is the youngest documented female to give birth at this time. And she is from Peru, and there's a reason too, as I'm learning and wanna share with you, why the two youngest females in the world who've given birth that has been documented at this time are both from Peru. Lena being five years, seven months, and the other little girl is Hilda Trujillo, and she was, like I said, also from Peru. She gave birth at nine years, seven months, in 1966. It's not that these two events happened more often there, it's just that um, the United States and UK and other parts of the world had protection for children and it wasn't public knowledge. But in Peru, they looked at it differently. They looked at it as though this is a medical incident that is happening and we're gonna learn from it, we're gonna document it, and we're going to care for these children. Lena lived in a small village high in the Andes Mountains in Peru with her parents. When her tummy began to get really swollen, her parents were concerned. Her mother took her into the doctor thinking it was some type of mass or tumor. And she had an x-ray and it was discovered that she was seven months pregnant at that time. Lena's baby was raised as though he was Lena's little brother. The parents raised them this way and it happened to be that the truth of the matter came out accidentally and it was other people talking about it as that happens in other communities too. People at school or people uh, at church and other places might talk about what they've heard or what the rumors were, what their parents told them. So at approximately age 10, Gerardo was told that he was a unusual baby, a miracle baby, and some of the whispers occurred about his sister being his mother. So the truth then was told to him at age 10. Still a child himself trying to process this. Apparently, even though he knew the truth, he accepted this, and he and Lena had a very close relationship, so the documentation says. Before I get into precocious puberty, I wanted to mention about their relationship. Although close and although they stayed together as brother, sister, mother, son with their two parents, Gerardo died at a fairly young age, age 40, from some type of bone marrow illness disease. And at this time in 2025, Lena Medina is still alive and in her early 90s. the question of how, how did this happen? So Lena had precocious puberty and nowadays there are medications that when children are before age say eight or so are developing faster than they should be and they're having say the girls are having periods at age three, four, five, six and so on, you can go to the doctor and get medication to suppress this early onset puberty for girls and boys. But at that time, they did not do that. So some of these girls and continue who don't get suppression of early onset puberty, that can continue to happen. And so menstruation can occur extremely early. 
ovulation occurs, of course, at that point, breast development occurs with boys, deeper voice, testes develop. All of this is happening at an extremely early age. And that's where some of these little girls, not just in Peru, but all over the world, have been become pregnant and have given birth as children. However, in some rare cases, it can be not just hormone imbalance related, but it can be a brain tumor, pituitary issue. It's not always necessarily related to hormones in the same way as we think of precocious puberty. Lena's mother did say that she had bleeding each month, even as a young, young child, age two and three and four, but she did not discuss this with a physician at that time. Okay, so now we know about the case a little bit more and how uh, amazing this is, unusual this is, that a child can get pregnant, go to term almost, or have a baby that survives. But the other part of this is the devastation that this was a SA, was an absolute despicable assault that occurred on a child. And when you start looking up other things like this and other documented cases like this in other countries that don't protect the kids' names as much or protect the situation, but they put it out there as medical information, you would be disgustingly surprised at how many cases there are out there. Lena did not say as a child or as an adult that any documentation has given to us to tell us who did this. She didn't say who did this to her. She wasn't able to articulate about this as a child. And it was suspected though that it was her father. So her father was arrested and then he was released a short time later due to lack of evidence. His, her father had continued to say it was not him. As time went on and more research was evolving into who did this to her, apparently there was some type of festival that occurred at the time that she did get pregnant. And it is suspected that it may have happened at that time. Lena grew up and she eventually married. I believe it was in her 30s and she went on to have another child. And like I said, Gerardo passed away at 40 years old. As a nurse, I find this story not just curious, but it gives us an opportunity to have more compassion and understanding. And it also helps us to understand a bit more about the hot topic of abortion, because in circumstances like this, children have had to go on to have babies and some have not made it, the babies have not made it. Uh, another opportunity such as abortion maybe could have been something that was could have been offered to some of these children. And this, like I said, continues to go on. It's just another opportunity or choice instead of giving birth at age five, nine, 10, and so on. Precocious puberty is something that is, I find common only because I work, you know, I worked all those years in pediatrics and developmental peds. And so we saw this all the time. We had pediatricians that did nothing but uh, this sort of thing, endocrinologists and so forth, that took care of children that had precocious puberty. Um, I'm sure as in this case and many others, whether parents are offered this or not, to suppress the puberty, that is still a choice I suppose that parents do make. And if it is not, uh, a, a doctor has not diagnosed this, a pediatrician has not seen this happening with a child and offered to suppress it, then this is the kind of thing that can happen. Thanks for learning with me today. I know that this is kind of a hot topic. Not all topics are comfortable. It's uh, something though that we can all learn from and we can explore a lot of these health topics together. If you learned from this or found this fascinating, please consider subscribing and you know the deal. See you at the next video.